Now you've really gone and done it. You've sunk your jet ski. Where do you go from here? We're going to show you. Now specifically today, we're going to be working on this 2017 Yamaha VX Deluxe. Now, this unit has been underwater. The first thing you need to know is you got to move fast. The longer you leave a personal watercraft engine with water potentially inside of it, the more damage can get done. You need to act fast. This was just sunk either today or yesterday, so we're fresh uh, to the scene, I guess. So we're gonna take the seats off. We need to get all the water out of the combustion chambers, the intake, and then we need to change all of the oil. So let's hop on over into the engine bay and get started on this. Okay, so this jet ski in particular is equipped with a 1049cc three-cylinder Yamaha TR1 engine. This is in the somewhere in the 2015 model range. Yamaha came out with this engine to replace the MR1 platform. Um, so this is what we're working with today. To get us started, we're gonna pop all three connectors off of the coil packs, tuck those down and out of the way, get a 10 millimeter socket on here, and we're gonna crack all six of these coil pack retainer screws loose. Then we'll pull all our coil packs up out. And we'll get a 5.8 socket with a long extension so that we can reach down in here and spin loose our spark plugs. Once your spark plugs are all loose, you can grab a coil pack, snag them up out, and then sure enough, we've got water on that one. Water all over that one. And water all over that one. We need to get all the water out of here and the intake manifold. On the TR1s, it is vital to get the water out of the intake manifold before you try to start it because of the design of the intake manifold. If you just blow out just the engine and not the intake manifold, you'll get it started, it'll suck up water, and then it'll uh, bend rods and all kinds of bad stuff because it will be running uh, when it hydrolocks. Not a good time. So in order to get to this intake manifold to drain it, if you're standing where I am on the left-hand side, look over here where I'm pointing. And then down inside the hull, you'll see this big plastic box. That's the intake manifold. And right here is the sensor held on by a single Phillips screw. Unscrew that Phillips screw, unplug the sensor, pull it out, and then you have a place to put your oil extractor and drain your intake manifold of water so that you don't hurt your engine when you start it. So this little guy right here, see if the camera will focus, there's a little Phillips screw on the end. This is what we are wanting to remove to put our oil extractor down in there. To get your hose down in there, you're probably going to need an angle cut on the end. Take the end of our oil extractor hose. I'm going to dip it right down in each cylinder and suck every bit of water out that I can. Minimize what we have to blow out. We're gonna take now and uh, pull the lanyard out and we're gonna crank this motor over with all the plugs out and everything loose just to make sure everything spins freely, blow up any last little bit of water, anything like that. So. Hold the throttle wide open too. Let water kind of settle because you're going to have some in the cylinder head on top of the valves and stuff and it all kind of needs to settle out where it needs, where it wants to go essentially. We're going to blow the water off of these spark plugs, dry them out good. 
So you can do the same thing in reverse, stick them in a uh, coil pack and then just spin them, start them in, snug them up, put all of our coil packs back in, So we've got our sunken recovery TR1 here behind me. Now I've got it hooked up to the garden hose. Start it up, run it for a minute, make sure that everything is running good, and then check the oil and look at it. If it's water contaminated, it'll look milky and disgusting. If it still looks healthy, then we can go from there. So let's fire this thing up. And um, now remember, anytime you're running a jet ski on the hose, it is start the engine, start the water, Stop the water, stop the engine, that order. Never start the water without the engine running. It can backflow and you'll be right back where you were. So let's fire this thing up. So now at this point, we're going to disconnect our flush fitting. Put the cap back on here. We're going to pop our dipstick out and take a look at how our oil looks and determine should we do an oil change or not. That looks a bit milky, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And a little over full. See how full that is down in there? So that tells us that there's probably some water in there. And it is best that we suck that out and put some fresh oil in. Knowing that, we can move on, change the oil. That's just going to be like a normal oil change. If you haven't done a normal oil change on your personal watercraft, click up here. Over here, I, I don't know where YouTube puts all that stuff anymore. We're going to have a video on how to change the oil on one of these, which is going to be very similar for basically anything. You change, you suck out the oil, you change the filter, you put oil in. Eh, simple enough, right? So, all right, well, that tells you how to get your sunken, seized up, hydro locked Yamaha TR1 engine back into the land of the living. So, Stay tuned, we've got more stuff coming on this machine. Um, so, all right, thanks for watching.